My name is Eugene Nikolai, and I'm a geospatial solutions consultant with Corec. Together with me today is Fran Mulali, who is the training and support manager for Corec Ireland. Hi, everyone. Before joining Corec, I worked for a surveying company, and although I was using Trimble equipment, there were helpful tools in Trimble Access I wasn't aware of at the time that would have helped me with various surveying tasks. So at Corec, we went ahead and prepared this webinar to make you aware of some of the tools. You might know some of them, some of you might not, and we hope all of you will go away from this webinar with new information. I just want to highlight that our webinar today is only looking at Trimble Access for general survey. In this session, we will not go through Trimble Access roads and corridors, monitoring, tunnels, pipeline, and services. We will take questions that you might have. Please write your questions in the question box and we will answer them at the end of the presentation. Just a little bit about Trimble Access Field software, designed to support your everyday work, including topographic survey, staking control and more. Trimble Access offer a familiar, easy to use interface that will ensure productivity. You will experience less downtime associated with learning a new software. Trimble Access for general survey support the full range of Trimble GNSS and Trimble total stations. Trimble field solutions work in harmony with a variety of surveying equipments to gather surveying information. You can capture the whole picture with value added information so, such as geotagged digital images. You can reduce the time between data capture and processing by sharing the data direct from the field. You can share data in real time bridging the gap between field and office by enabling real-time data sharing with Trimble Access Sync. You can instantly move files, provide updates and or reports to colleagues in the office or directly to your client using the internet connection on your logger. You can eliminate the downtime of traveling between field and office and enjoy real-time communication and collaboration between all members of your team, no matter where they are. So by using Trimble Access, you can add more value to your business by producing higher quality deliverables more quickly and send them directly from the field. You can even perform calculations and general, generate reports without a trip back to the office. Computing in the field lets you deliver faster to clients, which save time and money. Okay, so let's get into the nuts and bolts of what we want to show you today. My colleague Fran will take over and show you some tools from Trimble Access that you might find useful. So hi everyone. Yeah, as Eugene said, when he joined Corec, he'd been using Access for a while. And one of the features that uh, I was showing him that I just thought that he would know already, but again, sometimes you assume maybe that people do know these things, but he could have been using an older version of Access. And sometimes even when there is a new release, you may not find naturally find your way to all the new functionality. So I wanted to start with this one, setting out by DXF by Node, uh, which is a nice feature in um, Trimble Access and something our customers were looking for for a number of years. Um, so to show you it, what I'm going to do, just to let you know how it's going to work today, I'm going to be using my Trimble Access emulator to show you some of it but I'm also connected to a TSC3, so I may toggle between the two just to show you different functions. Okay, just because I mentioned it as well, the version of Trimble Access that I'll be using at the moment is uh, version uh, 2017.11, and the version of General Survey then is 3.20. So if you find that maybe some of the functionality that I'm using isn't available, it may be the case that you need to update your Trimble Access. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a job and I'm going to load a CAD drawing and show you some of the functionality of setting out by node. Okay, so jobs, new job, and we'll just call it set out DXF. Okay, enter and accept. Okay, so I'm going to go into my map screen here. And just another thing I want to make you aware of as well, again, for people who have uh, TSC3s um, as opposed to my emulator here, okay? The emulator has the controls down the left-hand side of the screen. If I go back to my TSC3 and I go to my map screen, I'll just make this view a little smaller, okay? What you'll see in Trimble Access is that um, the commands are down the bottom of the screen, okay? 
Also, there's a slight naming difference as well, but again, it, it, it brings you the tools themselves are the exact same. If I want to go and go into, we'll say, my CAD drawings or my layers or my active map menu in the map screen in Trimble Access, on a TSC3, I hit the up arrow and I go into layers. And that brings me through to the active map menu, okay? Slightly different on my emulator. It's just the case that um, when I go to here, I'm going to layers instead. So that's the only real difference for the function I'm about to show you anyway. So if we're going to layers, I've preloaded a DXF drawing, okay? What I'm gonna do first of all is just click on the entire drawing and just show you the drawing. And if I zoom extents here, I just have to zoom from where my emulator thinks it is and show you the drawing. So I hope you know most customers out there for their setting out purposes or even just navigation purposes are using um, CAD drawings um, in DXF format. What I'm going to do to show you this new functionality is I'm just going to activate an, uh, one or two different layers from within the drawing. So I'm gonna go back into my layers menu and I'm going to expand the drawing and turn off the layers I don't want and go in here and turn on the grid layer. Okay, so in the past to set out say the start and end point of one of these grid lines, I would have had to go into Trimble Access. I would have had to click on the line, say okay, and then I would have had to use the stakeout function to stake out the very start of the line and the end of the line if that's what I required. Okay, um, which is fine. That's still functionality you can use within Trimble Access. Another one, this is why I use this drawing, is as well, um, when I show you the nodes function as well, you'll see the nodes function will put uh, nodes at the start and end of each line segment, but also a nice feature is what it does for circular objects. So I'll show you here. So I'll just zoom out a bit again, go in here and go into layers. So if you want to get at the new, the options for your CAD drawing, in the active map screen, you can go to options and in here you have your different options. So this is the one, again, that Eugene just wasn't aware of that I think is very useful. If you hit Create Nodes, again, it might be something you want to just leave on. If I hit Accept and Accept, you see what I have now is that I have uh, nodes at the start and end of all my line work, which makes it easier. I mean, setting out a line is fine, but if you are setting it out a line, you have to be conscious of your change along the line and your offset left or right of the line. Setting out a point, is even more easy. It's just simple, select the point, stake out and follow the um, arrow directly to the point. So I'm just going to wake up my emulator here and fool it into thinking it's connected to a GPS. Okay, and I'll just put in my antenna height. And there you are, you just follow the arrow. You've probably seen as well in the display on screen, another really nice function is if you have a circular object of some sort and you usually generally want to set out the center of it, um, it automatically creates a node in the center of uh, any circular object. Again, just easily selectable and you can set it out straight away. So you can see setting out nodes, very useful. Um, if I show you the advantage of it, maybe with uh, another layer on the drawing, if I go back into layers here, and this time I will turn off the grid layer and I'm going to turn on a different layer, the building layer itself. So again, you can see in the past, if I had wanted, say, to set out uh, maybe this line here, okay? First of all, I might have selected the line. And in this case, I have the polylines are not unexploded. So I would have had to go in to this option, back into my DEWG option and maybe explode the polyline. And then once the polyline is exploded, then I should have been able to select the actual segment that I wanted. And then, again, I would have had to start out start and end. But as you can see, because I actually selected it there myself, having the nodes means that I can just start the start and end of every segment. Okay. Um, one other thing I want to show you, just another nice one there that you may use from time to time. If I go back in and I turn on all the layers of my drawing again. Okay. And if I accept, and if I browse into this point here, what you'll see is, I hope some of you can see it, you might even be able to see it, but it's kind of the point. There's some pale yellow line work here, okay? 
So that pale yellow line work uh, probably looks lovely in CAD on the black screen and everything, but it's very hard to see when you're actually in the field and trying to set out. So what I'm going to do is just, again, same place as before, go into my Layers menu, go into my Active Map Options, and turn on Monochrome. Now I'm forewarning you, sometimes this doesn't work straight away, sometimes on the emulator, but I guarantee it will on your TSC3. Sometimes you have to turn it on and off once or twice for it to uh, work with the emulator. Oh, first time, great stuff. So you can see what you've got now is everything is in monochrome. So the, the line work that you require is, um, is just there and easier to view. Uh, my colleague is just after reminding me of something I meant to show you. Uh, so what I'll do again in here is there was another function as well that I think can be very useful and maybe you don't know it's there. So if I was setting out my grid lines, if I wanted the intersection of two lines, okay, that it doesn't come up as an automatic with the nodes, but it's easily generated. So I can select my first line, select my second line, and then once the two lines intersect, I can hold down anywhere in the blank map screen and say compute intersection. I can create offsets if I require. In my case, I just want a simple point. So one, I might give it a code of intersection point, something like that. Again, this is a 2D drawing, but in this case, say I did know the finished floor level or something like that, I could input that if I wanted to and store the point. And now if I clear selection again, what you'll see is I actually have a point here on my um, screen that I can just easily select and again stake out. So if I go back to our PowerPoint here, uh, hopefully I've shown you a little bit about set out DXF by node and I think some of the other DXF options here as well, explode, monochrome and intersection point. So uh, moving on from the DXF, again as we said earlier, if you have any questions please ask them and we'll try and come to them at the end. Um, vertical offset measure points. Uh, this is one, and I'm using Access well as long as it has been out. Uh, I didn't know it was there till very recently, and I just find it useful um, for. Well, I give you an example now. So let's just say I was in measure points, and I was measuring a manhole cover. So I can go in here, and I can pick my manhole from my feature library, and let's just say I measure that point. Okay, so that's my point stored. Observation okay. stored. Maybe now I want to lift the manhole cover and measure my invert level. So in the past, what I'd be doing here is maybe I'm making a, a note of the invert level or maybe I'm keying it in as an attribute if I have an attribute field created in my feature library. But what I can do now is I'm go in here and pick my invert level from my code. And again, I just happened to come across this. If you go to options down below and you go to the second page, there's this tick box, add vertical offset. So if you hit add vertical offset and I hit accept, you see now what I've got is a little field here where I can add an offset. I think before what a lot of surveyors might have been doing is maybe even messing with the pole height to get to point. But now what you can do is let's just say it's 1.8 or something to my invert level. I can put in my offset, I can hit here, I can say the offset is down, okay? And I can measure that, maybe the same point again and the same point in the cover level, so the invert level and the manhole cover at the same east and northing, but different elevations. Observation okay. stored. That, again, can be toggled on or off just by going back in here and removing the vertical offset. If you wanted to make a more permanent change to it, you could actually go into the survey styles and engage it there. Just to show you as well, all these are recorded just to show you it's done what it's supposed to. If I go to jobs and point manager, you can see my invert level here with the difference in elevation between the two points with the same X and Y. Okay, so that is vertical offset measure points. Using the camera. Okay, it surprises me sometimes that people tend not to use the camera on the TSC3. Um, maybe you're not in the habit of taking photographs or don't have the need to take photographs of your survey points or anything on site for that matter. But if you do on the one occasion you do or if you intend to at some stage, uh, it's a good idea to be able to use the camera. Okay, um, to show you how it's done, in this case what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect to the TSC3. 
I just make the screen a bit bigger here so you can see it. Okay, so to engage the camera, I can't really show you the keypad on a TSC3 here, um, but it is the function button, which is the FN button, which is just above the power button on the bottom left. If you hit the FN button and the number one, you can actually see over the number one, you've got a little camera icon. So if I hit FN and the number one, it launches the camera, okay? The camera works in much the same way as any other digital camera. You can go into menu, you can go, well, it's a really interesting point, you can make a video. Uh, you can even go into mode, you can take a timer, so if you want a selfie with your point, you can do that too. The usual stuff, brightness, resolution, zoom, white balance, flash, okay? So what you wanna do is, when you want to take your point, I'll take one of my, hi, uh, Eugene here, give us a wave, Eugene. Hello, guys. Okay. So there we go, take my picture there. Now you can take multiple pictures as well in sequence, okay? And if you take multiple pictures, what it does is sequentially, it'll offer you uh, the ability to link that photograph to a point. Again, you can, in the feature library in uh, Trimble Business Center, create a library um, where you have a photo field, but you don't necessarily have to have that set up. As you can see here, when you take any photograph with Trimble Access, it usually offers you, this is by default, by default it's usually set to this. So what I can do is, if I want to link this beautiful picture of Eugene here to the point I just surveyed, the point I've just surveyed, I can say link to previous point. If I want to link this picture to the next point, I say next point, and the next point I survey, this will be linked to. Um, if I want to link to the job or to no point in particular, I can also do that. But this one can be handy too, point name. So say I've already measured the point but maybe a few minutes ago, but I'm only remembered to take the photograph now. I can say point name. I can go in here, I can hit list, and I can pick the point from a list. So if I want uh, to link that to point A. Also, geotag image is nice. So what it'll do is it'll give that photograph the lat long of the surveyed point. So if I accept, okay. Just so you know, like anything I showed you earlier, if you go into jobs and review job, this is a complete chronological record of everything you did in the survey. And you see here, if I click up here, I can see that link to point one is my media file and I can click in here and it shows me the picture. <laughs> and uh, also, if for some reason later on, I wanted to produce a, port, a report, I can go into jobs, import, export, export custom format. When you go into export custom format, if you just hit M, I can go to media file report. And if I accept that, what it does is, should pop up here, it creates you a HTML file with uh, the point name and which image relates to it. So very straightforward. If you have multiple pictures of the same point, again, it'll just say all the associated images that go with that point. So again, very easy stuff. Um, there's no reason not to be using your camera if uh, the need is there for it. Um, when I was actually doing the bit on the camera, it reminded me of something else. Again, something I was using Trimble Access and Survey Controller before for years without knowing this one was here, but a customer showed me, and again, I just think it's useful. I think it was the linking the, the image to points reminded me of just the, the ability to link information to points very quickly from the access interface. So. Again, if I had just uh, measured a point, I was about to measure a point, there's a nice one here where you can go into favorites. Now, while I'm in favorites, just so you know, it's very easy to uh, customize favorites. You can go in here and you can add new commands to favorites. Actually, if you're doing it in the TSC3, what's nice is, close this here. And here. If I close this here and go back to the main screen, uh, if I go to favorites here and customize, you have the option to assign a command to the app button one and two. So if you're wondering what they are, at the very top of the keypad in the middle, um, to the left, or sorry, to the right of the Windows button and to the left of the OK button, you have two buttons that look like underscores. Um, they can be configured for useful functions as well. So you can customize it or, um, if I'm in my case, I'm just going to use the standard favorites menu. So if I go to favorites and I go to key and note, 
What's great about using this particular way of adding a note is if I add my field note here, uh, if I wanted, I could even timestamp the field note. Okay, so that's when I measured the point up here usually, and this is when you actually made the note. But what you can do is if I hit previous, it'll link that note to the point, of the last point I've surveyed. If I hit next, it'll link the point to the point I'm about to survey. So again, very quick to do um, from the main menu. So if I say previous, if I go back again into my jobs and go into point manager, you'll see that you will have a note here linked to the point that I had surveyed previous. You can go into point manager at any stage, of course, and if you click under the note column in point manager, you can uh, add field notes or you can make field notes. But I just think that that ability to just very quickly nip into favorites, key in note, uh, it's in a very easy way to add extra information to a point you just surveyed. Okay, so that's quick notes. Map screen, okay. I'm going to do a bit on the map screen, and in fact, it ties in a little bit with the data set that I have for stockpile computation. And the stockpile computation is actually going to bring me in then to a volume calculation between two surfaces, so they'll kind of roll into one. But I'm going to start with one that uh, is a bit of uh, a bugbear of mine. Uh, we often have, anyone who's used VRS will know this one. Let me just open a job here called VRS Base. So before maybe um, when you were using a base and rover, it was handy in your map screen when you were looking at your survey to see um, your base because it wouldn't be that far away. But obviously with a lot of people using VRS now, what annoys me is when I'm in my survey and this is my actual survey area, but then I hit zoom extents, what happens is the logger uh, zooms to um, the local VRS station. So it increases the scale and means that I constantly have a situation where I'm constantly zooming in on my survey points. To disable that, and again, if you remember, I'm going here and going to settings, or sorry, apologies, I'm going to the eye and going to filter. Just to remind you that if you're using a TSC3, you go to map and you go to up arrow, and it's actually a filter in here as well, but it's the up arrow to get at the command. So if I go into here, and filter, if I untick base points, this, just so you know as well, will remain unticked, okay? So you need only do it once, and then it should remain unticked and accept. What happens then is you can see it's removed the base. So what will happen is when I'm zoomed in in my survey area, if I hit zoom extents, it's not going to zoom from where I got the VRS corrections to my survey area. It's just going to zoom my survey area. That was one, if you didn't know where it is, uh, like me for a while, um, it was a joy when I finally got to uh, find out where it was. So map screen, labels and filter. Okay, let's look at the stockpile data and that kind of brings me along into what I want to show you here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna create a new job here. Call it, I will call it stockpile. And instead of me measuring a point, I'm just going to link some stockpile data as an Excel file, as a linked file. Click in here and go to stockpile and accept and accept. If I go back to my map screen, I zoom in on my stockpile area. Okay, here's my stockpile. But what you'll probably see is at the moment, uh, there's not a lot of useful information displayed by displaying this data by its point number, okay? So what I need to do is go into my map screen and again, if you remember, up arrow for, for people on the TSC3 and go into settings. Now, I will actually show you this again because it's actually worded differently. It's actually options on a TSC3. So again, though, the menu is the same once you go in there. So if I go into settings, at the moment, I'm displaying my points by names much more useful for what I'm doing to see it by codes, except, and I can see that, okay, these are the bottom of bank points now, and these are spot level. Because I'm doing a volume calculation, it might actually make sense, apologies, might actually make sense to go in here and turn on the elevations also. And again, yeah, that was useful because I can see I definitely don't want to include my station points because for some reason they're at zero elevation. So to actually select uh, the points that I want to use, Okay, you click on your arrow here, 
and you can select points. I'm actually going to miss, make a mistake here just to show you how to deselect points. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select uh, one of the station points. So what you can do is if you've mistakenly uh, selected a point or you want to add points to the surface that you haven't selected with your original selection area, you can hold down CTRL, which is to the left of the underscore and to the right of the up arrow on the bottom row of the keypad on a TSC3. And then I can just hold down, deselect the point I don't want, and then select the other two points that I missed. Okay, so to compute a, surf uh, sorry, a volume, I first of all have to make a surface. To compute the surface from the map screen, you can hold down on a blank part of the screen say compute volume as part of the compute volume process it allows it creates a surface so if i just say that this is a sp1 stockpile one whatever it is okay and give it a name there's loads of different volume calculations that you can make and access but in my case i'm just looking at stockpile or depression or stockpile and excavation you can put in a haulage or sorry a bulkage or shrinkage factor if you wish but if i just say calculate so here i know now there's my cut uh, all the information I want. Just be aware as well that if I just wanted to see that information, I can back out without storing it. If I want to see this information at a later date, it's important you hit store. And also if you want to produce a volume report, it's important you hit store as well. So I'm going to hit store, escape back out, and you see what I have now is my surface. If I just go in here, the reason that's shown in black and white, you may remember, is because when you create a surface in um, Trimble Access, just like you would in Business Center, it creates a file extension called TTM, Trimble Triangulated Model. And again, these can be unloaded or unloaded like a, a, an active map DXF just by taking them. But at the moment, it's shown it in monochrome. So I untick that and go back in. There's my volume. And obviously, I get over here my um, legend as well. So I can see what's going on. So. Um, very useful as well, just to be able to do a quick stockpile on site without having to go back to your software and generate um, through Trimble Business Center or something like that. Okay, so that is the stockpile. Again, if I want to turn that off into layers, you can just turn that off and it disappears, okay, leaving you just your survey points. Okay, I wanted to show you a slightly different um, volume between two surfaces. So I'll just create a new job here, give me a blank screen. To surfaces and enter and accept okay so if I go to my map screen what I'm going to do this time is I'm just going to show you very quickly what it is we're looking at here these actual TTMs were created in business center okay and they make the exact same file extension um, as if they were created on the logger TTM so if I bring an OGL so this is an original ground level survey that I might have done on site and then what's happened is someone has come along and there has been an excavation, okay? So what you can see, if I put that into 3D for you, you'll see that I have two surfaces, one on top of the other. If I zoom in here, you'll see what I'll do is I just take off the OGL so you can see that the dig is in there, okay? I've got that has been taken out of the original ground level. Okay, so those are the files I'm putting on the logger. As I said, they can come from TVC or they can be files you generated yourself or a mix. If I go in here and I go into layers, first of all, I just add in the excavation, show you what that looks like. Okay, actually, bear with me. I just have to disconnect from my GPS first for this. So if I go to exit here, and just come back in again. Okay, so if I go to my map and uh, zoom extends, there's my excavation. Okay, and what I'm going to bring then in on top of it is the uh, OGL. So Again, it's hard to see that because the OGL is so flat. I think it might be made up data. Um, so you can see it's generally all kind of orange because that's the elevation, but you can see the two surfaces. At this time, I'm not going to do it through the map screen. I'm actually going to do it through the COGO functions. So you go into COGO, coordinate geometry. You have all the different functions in here. I can go to compute volume. And in this case, it's slightly different. I want to compare two surfaces, so surface to surface. I'm going to say my initial surface is the original ground level survey. 
and my final surface is the excavation. So I calculate there, there's the volume calculation, and again, I can store that if I want to produce a report later. Those reports, again, if I go to jobs, review job, are in here in jobs, review job. I can just click in here and all the information is available. But again, if I want to actually produce a report, jobs, import, export, export custom format. And in here, instead of media file report, if I pick volume computational report and accept, okay, I'll just hit that again and accept, and okay. You can see you get all your cut fill at uh, the different surfaces, again, just in case you need to produce a report to go with your volume calculation. Okay, so let's have a look. Okay, guys, um, some measure codes. I think this is, again, a very, very useful function that maybe not everyone is using. Um, very straightforward, no reason that uh, everybody shouldn't be using it. So, measure codes. What I'm going to do is just going to connect to my GPS again here. And I'll just create a new job. Oh, measure codes. Okay, I've attached a FXL, Feature Library I created in Trimble Business Center, but just so you're aware, you can also create feature libraries on the Logger and Trimble Access as well. So I've accept that. What I'm gonna do is just fire up a survey here. Okay, before I go into measure codes, I just want you to be aware that when you're in measure codes, the measurement method is defined by the measurement method that's set in measure points before you go in there, okay? So I'm gonna pick rapid point, which is a one second measurement, because uh, it'll just make it quicker for demonstration purposes. Okay, so if I go to favorites here, uh, sorry, if I go back to my menu here and go to measure codes, okay? At the moment, I don't have any group of codes, okay? So I'm gonna start with a very, very, very simple example. Let's just say I'm going out and I'm measuring services or utilities um, for the day. I can just say add group, utilities, say okay. And what this does is it gives me a number of squares, okay? The number of squares that you use can be configured. All the options for configuring um, measure codes are accessed by hitting the up arrow and options. So as you can see at the moment, I have three by four, but if let's just say I only wanted nine squares, I can hit three by three and accept. And what I can do then is I can start assigning feature codes to these squares. So if I hold down here and say I was measuring an air valve, Let's hold down again, and let's just say I was measuring something like a fire hydrant. And maybe manhole circular, and maybe another one, maybe a collie. Um, yep, collie. Okay, so the advantage of this is that as soon as I press the code, that Trimble Access takes a measurement, okay? So it can make it very quick and speed you up on site. So I'm just gonna hit air valve, okay? Uh, not too sure why that hasn't worked, bear with me. Observation okay. stored. So it's already measured the point, okay? So I can just click in here, quickly measure. I'll just go back here to measure points and just put in one here. And then if I go back, what you can do as well is you don't have to go to favorites, you can use switch to, which is really nice and toggle between the two menus. So if I go back into measure codes, I hit this, measures my fire store. hydrant, measures the manhole, just store the attribute. Observation so very stored. easy to move between codes and it's less button taps. You don't have to scroll through your library, you've set up exactly the codes you're going to need in the field. A question often comes up is, Let's just say I am surveying utilities, but then I happen to come across something that isn't here, okay? 
very easy. If I actually know the code I want to use, I can click in here and just type it in. So let's just say it was a fence point or something like that, fence one. You can just click in here and enter and measure. Observation stored. stored. Okay. Um, what you can also do though as well, if you didn't know the code off the top of your head, it, it, it's so quick to just switch back into measure points and then click in here and have access to your entire library. Of course, if you have auto on, when you have a feature library selected, it keeps your most used codes up the top of the library. So again, very useful stuff. So if I go back, that's probably a very simple example for using measure codes, just where you have your list of codes at your fingertips. Okay, let's do something a little bit different. Let's just say I was measuring strings. If I'm measuring strings and I click OK. So again, what I can do is I can assign different codes to this. So I go with something like a curb. I don't want too many examples here, really. Um, let's say roundabout, yeah, that's that. Roundabout, uh, should we write it that in a minute? Fence, okay. So, simple example might be, let's just say the feature, first feature I'm measuring is a curb, but I want to measure two curbs at the same time. So I'm gonna start on curb one, measure a point, then cross the road to curb two, measure a point there, move down the curb two, measure a second point in curb two, then cross the road and measure curve one. So measuring diagonally in this case. In the usual menu, you'd be going in, you'd be typing in KB1 and then deleting the one and putting in the two. But it's really easy with measure codes. I can hit this plus here, curve one, hit the point. Observation point measured. stored. I can cross the road, hit this, curve two, click, Observation point stored. stored. Measure the second point in curve two. Observation stored. And then when I cross the road, hit that measure curve one, curve one again. So you can see story. it's really easy to toggle up and down the curve, the string numbers here by just hitting the plus and minus. What can also be very useful as well is, let's just say you have a feature library set up um, and you're using some of the codes from TBC. So say I was using something like plus to start a string. Instead of using KB1, KB2, KB3, I want to use start and end string by using plus to start the string of each time I use a code. Um, I could use something like that and have it there. I could use something else, say maybe close the string here. Uh, so I, basically I could have a lot of my global codes um, that control strings set up here, ready to use if I need to use them. So say H for horizontal offset, okay? So what I can do is to double up on the codes. So let's just say I want to use KB1. Uh, in this case, let's just say that I want to use KB and a plus. So I'm going to say KB. To, to double up in codes, it's important that you click in here, code. So KB and then the plus. And that allows me to double up. And now I can measure the point. Observation stored. The next point in the string will just be KB. So I can go back. Observation then stored. Then when I cross the road and I'm starting a fresh curve, just click here again and I can hit KB and plus. It actually has a memory, so it remembers the last one you use and measure again. So this is very handy to double up on codes if you're using global coding um, as part of the measure codes. Okay, so show you a last one, um, which is probably, um, you know, just uh, if you were measuring, say, kilometers of road and you wanted to measure it as section. So what I'm gonna say, just so you're aware as well, I can toggle between groups at any time, yeah? So they're there and they get stored. If you want to get rid of groups you've created, it's very easy, hit the up arrow and just hit delete and it will delete that selected group. If I say add group, and this time I'm gonna say road. And what I'm gonna say is, let's just say I was measuring five strings on a road. So I might start off with verge one, one side of the road. Then I might have road edge, okay. Road edge, and we'll say road edge one. And then we might have the center line. And then we might have road edge two. And then we might finally have verge two. Okay. So what you can do again by hitting the up arrow and going to options is you can 
first of all, go in here and you can define the template. So this is how after you measure a point that the actual, the next active square will be. So this would be if you measure a point on the left, the square would automatically move to right and so on. But zigzag is what I'm going to use. And I have five elements. So if I hit five here, accept. So to show you how this would work, I'll begin on one side of my road. I'll hit VE, start measuring. Point stored. stored. Without me doing anything, it's already moved to road edge one. I just click that and it measures. Observation stored. Click on my center line. It's all done Observation for me. Observation stored. All I do is click. Observation stored. Okay, so at this stage now, I've measured my verge two. Observation stored. So what it's doing is it's expecting to me to go 10, 15, 20, whatever it is, meters along verge two on the same side of the road. Measure the second point on that verge. Observation stored. And now it starts working its way back through the template, road edge. Observation stored. Center line. So that way I can measure my road Observation section. And as stored. I said, at any stage, if I'm measuring a point and then I realize I need to pick up Observation something else, stored. very easy. Just click in here and type in the code or just very quickly switch to back to measure points and into your usual menu. So very quick, I think, if you get used to using measured codes together with uh, measure points to uh, optimize your, your time and size to speed up your survey. So let's have a look. I think we're nearly there and we can get some questions. I mean, there's many more things. We just had to pick a, a few things to show you here this morning and not take up too much of your time either. So the last thing was um, some people, this pause VRS, um, many of you may have found it for those who didn't. It's definitely useful for those on a limited VRS license. Um, if you want to be thrifty with your uh, number of um, hours per quarter. Um, so in this case, I can't show you on a TSC3 because I haven't is, uh, I won't work through the VRS through my laptop. So I'm just going to show you very quickly on a PowerPoint here. So what it is, is if you look here, that when you are in a VRS survey, you're all probably too well aware that you have a globe up here that um, you get a green tick when you've your VRS survey started and it has initialized. Okay, by clicking on that green tick, it shows you, first of all, you can see here, this is your downloading data from the VRS network, okay, getting your corrections. Um, but rather than, so again, you might have be surveying something, you might need to talk to a landover, you might need to walk to the other side of the site, you might be surveying in that time, and if you want to manage your survey minutes as best you can, your VRS license, you can go in here, and you can hit pause or stop. They, as far as I'm aware, they do more or less the same thing. This doesn't mean that you are jumping out of the survey. You know, it doesn't disable the internet connection. It just stops you using your minutes. Um, it also, um, then once it's stopped, you can just hit play again and it resumes. And it's very quick, very quick to stop it and to start it again. It's much quicker than ending a survey and firing up the survey again. Um, of course, in here as well for all those people with it, uh, an R10 is where you can see whether XFIL has kicked in on your R10 or not. So I think that's me more or less covers the few ones that I wanted to show you today. Um, and what we'll do now is we'll have a look and see maybe if there's any questions on what we covered. Thanks, Fran, for the useful information shared with us today. I hope, guys, you'll find some um, real piece of nuggets that you were not aware of them before. Um, we'll go now through some questions sent over by you. We'll try and answer as many as we can today. But don't worry, if your question is not answered at this time, me and Fran will follow up via email. Okay, so the first question is from Andy. On the volume calculations carried out in Trimble Access, can you personalize the report formats? Uh, yes, yes, Andy. Um, what you've got there is, um, no, I haven't done it myself, may I say, but Basically, what um, the custom exports from Trimble Access, what they are is if you go into the system files folder on your um, TSC3, Trimble Data System Files, what you get is a .xsl file, okay? And uh, I can't remember the language again, um, what it is, but basically if I open up one, say one of the ones we used, uh, what did we use? We'll say the media file report, for example. There's a script there which can be edited, 
And um, again, I know companies of ours that have their own custom style sheets in there, so they export to custom softwares in a particular way and they put in all the unique characteristics that they need for the company. So I would think, yes, that those files can be edited as required. Thanks, Fran. And another question here we have from John. Um, what size DXF files Trimble Access can use? Uh, good question again. Um, generally speaking, I think Trimble have said that under five megabytes is um, the optimum because um, now it will take um, bigger files. I mean, you can put on an Orton survey map tile or whatever and quite large files. But what happens is the larger the file with more layers in it, as you say, uh, pan around the map screen or zoom in and out, um, you, it takes longer for Trimble Access to revisualize that screen. So um, I think the recommendations were roughly for about five megabytes. So if you have a large CAD draw, uh, CAD drawing that you want to use, a good idea would be to um, maybe just cut that down to size and put multiple CAD drawings on instead. You can load multiple CAD drawings, or you can just load them or unload them as you, you uh, as you require. But you'll probably get um, better performance from that. Okay, what else have we got? Okay, what are we seeing here? Question, multiple stock oil reports within one job or require a new job per report? That's a good question too, but let's see. We should be able to figure that one out fairly quickly if I go back to my emulator here. And I have a feeling it will do multiple. Uh, bear with me. I'll just open the two surfaces. And what I can do is, if I go into the map screen, and if I bring in the stockpile here, maybe. So, let me just check. Do I have the stockpile there? No. So you just might have to bear with me while I re-triangulate uh, this stockpile. So if we just very quickly make a copy volume, it's P2, okay. Stock point impression and calculate and store. So now we should have two volume calculations in here because I did the two surfaces too. So let's just see. Import, export, export custom format. We call it B. I should call it three surfaces, really, and we see what it says. Okay, yeah, that's that's what I thought. Yeah, it will do. Um, it will generate a report for all the volume calculations that took place in the one job. Very good, good question. Thank you. Okay, just checking for more questions here. Um, okay. I think that's it so far for questions. Obviously, if there's any other thing you think of later on, um, driving home or whenever it is, um, you can obviously just get in contact with Coric uh, support, um, or you can email myself or Eugene directly. Um, right, so listen, thank you on my behalf. Anyway, thank you to everyone who attended. So yes, we'll wrap up now. Thank you very much for attending. Hopefully, there was something new that you can take and use with your daily surveys. There, if there are any more questions, um, just email them across and Fran and his great technical support team will be happy to answer those. Thank you very much, guys, for attending. See you now. Bye.